This is an overview of the different videos available. The uh, Object Dictionary introduction gave you an introduction to the concept of the Object Dictionary used in CanOpen. Then the SDO and USDO are the service data accesses used in classical CanOpen and CanOpen FD. And we had the two PDO chapters, one for PDO communication and one for PDO mapping, which shows you how process data is put into a message and when and how it's triggered. Now this section is about the network management, so the NMT states, boot up messages, heartbeats, and how can we control nodes, start, stop them, or even give them a reset. This is our hardware setup. We have a peak micromod FDDR module. It's a digital input output module connected via the two CAN low CAN high signals going through a termination resistor, then a regular DB9 extension cable, another termination resistor going into a peak PCAN USB interface. Here we have CAN Open Magic, which communicates with the PCAN USB device, and we are at 500 kilobits per second. The I.O. module is set to node ID 12, so that's hexadecimal or decimal 18, and we have the network overview window open for later. For the trace recording, I'm now setting some filters, because for this demo we are only interested in a few messages and want to ignore everything else. So as number one message, we pick the NMT message, the Network Management Master. And as second, we select the heartbeats because we want to see all the heartbeats and nothing else in our system. I'm now powering up the device. And as a first message, we see the boot up message. And then comes the heartbeat of node number 12. I'm scanning the network to get the details about the node number 12. It's now pre-operational. To get it into the operational state, I'm now clicking on the NMT operational message and the device is in operational. Clicking on stopped puts it into stopped mode and I can bring it back to operational by transmitting another NMT message operational. Let's also do a reset. Now in the trace, we can now see that after the NMT reset, the device boots up again. So there's another boot up message and it's back into pre-operational. Also from here, we can set it to stopped mode and again out of there by transmitting the appropriate NMT master message. What we have seen until now was only the visible part. So what happens on a can open network and what are the states reported by a device? However, internally, there are a few more states and transitions involved that we really need to have a look at. So let's look at the entire network management state machine. The state machine is separated into two blocks. Here on the left side, we have the initialization part. And here on the right side, we have the communication part. So while we are operating and running. On power up, we enter the initialization block and go into another block, which is the reset application. In this block, the application data gets initialized and sometimes some low level hardware initialization is made uh, related to the uh, CAN interface. If specific pins, clock settings and uh, such need to be made, then that typically happens here. From here on, we go straight without uh, delay into the reset communication block. And here we finalize the initialization. So here we have the full initialization of the CAN interface. We have to retrieve our own network and node ID, wherever that is coming from, and the entire can open functionality needs to be initialized. 
if that was previously saved into some configuration storage area, then this needs to be retrieved also at this point. At the end of this, we leave the initialization area and go via the boot up transmission into the pre-operational state. Now, if a device is auto starting and is configured to self switch into operational, then we go straight on into the operational mode. Otherwise, we sit and wait in the pre-operational mode until the network management master tells us what to do. The ways out of the communication block are to either go via a reset application or to a reset communication. The main difference is that the reset communication really just resets everything around the can open and can communication. The reset application is intended to also reset the device as much as suitable. So if this is a generic I.O. sensor, then typically it's done via a hardware reset, like um, in programmer's term, a watchdog reset, so that really the behavior is the same as in a power up. However, some applications might not allow a full reset to that level. If there's a complex operating system running, some user interface or so, we might not want to do a full hard reset at this point. The entire state machine can only be left via a power down. And in uh, regards to power up and power down, we should also mention that some systems use instead um, a wake up and sleep so that the device can be set to sleep mode and communication on the can can open network can wake it up again. And typically after a wake up, the default arrangement is that we start with a full reset application again and run through the entire initialization. As we have seen earlier, the network management master is on charge of setting these states for all the devices. So it transmits the network management master message either to individual devices or as a group message, as a broadcast to everyone to switch into a certain state of operation. And these states are not only the three main states, pre-operational, operational and stopped, these can also be the reset communication or the reset application. As a result, the master is fully in charge of switching all the devices and making sure they operate as expected. And how it works is that typically it recognizes the boot up message when a device fires up. It will then leave the device in operational until the master figured out, hey, which device is it? Is it the one that I expect? And does it have the configuration that I expect? If uh, it still needs to be configured, then transmit the configuration. And only when this is done to all nodes and all the expected nodes are present, will the master switch the devices into the operational state. When it comes to the transitions that a can open device can do by itself, then that is a little bit limited. However, there are a few cases when a device can switch states. As I mentioned earlier, there's something called auto start. So if a device is intended to run maybe in a network without a network management master or in a fully automated setup and pre-configured setup, then auto start is an option where a device after it powered up, it's only briefly in pre-operational and then goes straight into operational mode by itself. A second case for nodes switching uh, states themselves is leaving the operational mode when errors are detected. As part of the error behaviors, devices can go from operational back to pre-operational if they encountered errors. And depending on configuration, they could also go back into stop mode. At that point, it is up to a network management master to detect this by, for example, consuming the heartbeats and to react upon it. So a network management master would then typically try to either set the device back to operational or first do some checking and read maybe error registers to see what happened or potentially um, give the device a reset to start over. When a device encounters a really serious error that um, 
indicates a hardware uh, error or maybe a software point error, so something serious where on an embedded device, typically something like a watchdog is triggered, then devices simply reset themselves. So it could really happen that while a device is running, if it encounters a deeply serious problem, it simply resets itself. So on the logical side, from the can open side, what we'll recognize is, well, it started over and transmitted a boot up. So it's as if somebody would have sent it an NMT reset command, but the device did it by itself because simply in its own running, it detected something so severe that it couldn't recover and said the only way to restart would be via a reset. Until now, we have seen all the different states and how we can switch them, but we have not yet discussed what is really the difference in the different states. What, what kind of a difference make this when I try to communicate with the device? And uh, really the states control which communication protocols are used and available. So looking at the network management and the heartbeat message, these are available anytime. So no matter in which of these three states, pre-operational, operational, or stopped a node is, it will always treat the heartbeats and network management message. The emergencies and SDOs, or in can open FD, USDOs, the service data access, is only available when we are not stopped. So in pre-operational and in operational mode. This ensures that a master has full access to a device that is in pre-operational mode via the service access, it can read and write all parameters of a device. And last, the PDOs, the process data objects, those are only available in operational state. The idea is that these cause a lot of additional traffic. And there's an easy way to enable, disable all the PDO communication simply by switching the states. And so only in operational state, all the data communication is available. Otherwise, in pre-operational, we are limited to the service data. This concludes the set of basic introductory videos to Can Open and Can Open FD. Please stay in touch with our YouTube channel or our blog to check for new publications of upcoming videos where we'll have a closer look at in-depth topics around CanCrypt, security for Can, or maybe um, in-depth topics like Can Open Layer Setting Services. That is where you can assign node IDs and bit rates through the Can communication. And there's always some new topics coming up in Can Open. Stay in touch.